Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Rain, and sorry to say it, but snow are starting to move into Metro Detroit. It may not be here for long, but it could have an impact on your afternoon as we are expecting some changes outside. This is a live look at downtown Detroit right now, and it looks pretty quiet. Good afternoon, everybody. Your four Warren meteorologist, meteorologist Ashley Verisi is standing by with a look at what's headed our way this afternoon. Well, you can see some of the blue on exact track 4D radar timing out exactly how expected really between about 11 a.m. and 2 we've been saying is that window where we're going to have a few sprinkles or flurries rolling through the area. Most of this being picked up on exact track 4D radar as snow at the moment. So let's zoom in to show you where we're tracking some of that snow at this hour. So north of I-69 into Lapeer and that is stretching even westward and north into the thumb. Some moderate snow showers likely coming down. We'll travel a little farther down to the southwest. So now this is starting to push into Howell, Fowlerville, even in Fenton. If we go a little farther south, we also have some snow pushing into parts of Lettaway County, including Onstead, getting close to Tecumseh, and parts of Washtenaw County, uh, Chelsea, Manchester, right along I-94, now getting close to Ann Arbor. So as we look outside with our sky cam here, if you look closely, you might see it shake just a little bit, and that's because the winds have been picking up as well. This is the time frame where these wind gusts are going to peak. In fact, right now, Flint has wind gusts reported at 44 miles per hour. Rest of us are mainly in that 30 mile per hour wind range with temperatures sitting in the mid 40s. This is the peak heat of the day because the temperatures are going to fall throughout the afternoon with some clearing skies by about four o'clock. We'll have more on this forecast because we have another shot at widespread rain coming up in just a few minutes, but you can track the clearing line today and when that rain rolls in later this week with our forewarned weather app, just take it on the go. All right, thank you, Ashley. Our top story here this noon, a man wrongfully convicted of an armed robbery is being released from prison in Macomb County. Mac Howell served years, seven and a half years of a 25 to 50 year sentence. He was convicted of robbing an East Point 7-Eleven back in 2014. Will Jones joins us now live and Will, I understand some new evidence came to light that is gonna let this man free. Rondo, well, a lot of new evidence came to light that showed that Matt Cowell did not commit the armed robbery. And Howell says he never gave up hope during those seven and a half years behind bars that he would be free. This morning, the 62-year-old was overcome with emotion during the press conference with Macomb County Prosecutor Peter Lacido. Howell was charged and convicted for an armed robbery that occurred at a 7-Eleven in East Point in April of 2014. He was sentenced to 25 to 50 years in prison. How was released Monday after his conviction and sentence was vacated due to new evidence that wasn't presented in the trial that undermined his conviction, including a serial armed robber at the time. How has always maintained his innocence. Sir, can you describe the relief you felt? It's amazing. Feel good. Real good. Did you maintain hope while in prison? And if so, how did you do that or, or not? We shouldn't bash the system, but we embrace the wrongs to make it right in the future. It's not a perfect system, but to make it perfect, we need to learn from mistakes that were made. And it's not at the expense of somebody's life or liberty. How is due about $300,000 from the state, according to the Wrongful Imprisonment Compensation Act. How's attorney says he's preparing a civil case. Live in Mount Clements, Will Jones, Local 4. Mm, just incredible to see his emotion, and you can certainly understand why. Will, thank you. Mm. We have some breaking health news this noon. The FDA approves an over-the-counter version of an opioid overdose reversal drug in a move that will likely increase access to the life-saving medication. Right now, Narcan is mainly available as a prescription drug. It can also be found at community centers and health departments in parts of Metro Detroit. The over-the-counter Narcan will be sold as a single dose of nasal spray. It will be sold at convenience stores, grocery stores, and more. It'll likely will not not be available though until late summer. And right now, the motive in the Nashville school shooting is still under investigation as the community continues to grieve the loss of three young children and three school employees. 
The shooter sent a disturbing Instagram message to which former childhood friend before the attack saying, quote, I'm planning to die today. The shooter had been under care for an emotional disorder and had legally bought seven guns. Jay Gray is in Nashville with today's developments. Well, the Covenant School just behind us still locked down at this point. Uh, police and federal agents on campus and continuing to gather evidence, trying to piece together exactly how and why all of this happened. We know uh, that investigators continue to go through what they say are volumes of written material, part of a manifesto that was left behind by the suspect in this case. They've interviewed the suspect's family and they continue to work through, again, the pieces of what may have led to the attack here, that while this community continues to try and find a way to move forward, we know that they have continued to gather at the school grounds here, uh, hundreds leaving uh, stuffed animals, balloons, cards, many of them in tears, many stopping and, and bowing their heads or kneeling in, in, in a moment of silence for the victims here. And there will be a citywide memorial later today here in Nashville. Thousands expected to be at that, and it should be a very emotional evening. That is the latest right now from here in Nashville. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you now. All right, Jay, thank you. Later today, thousands are expected to come together for a memorial for the children and staff members who were killed in this tragedy. Graduate student workers at the University of Michigan have officially gone on strike. 95% of union members voted to strike over a contract fight. The strike started about a half hour ago, and the graduate students want a 60% bump in pay in Ann Arbor and on Dearborn's campus, and an 88% bump from the Flint campus. The university may ask a court to force the graduate employees back. We have a crew heading to Ann Arbor, and we'll have live reports in our later newscast today. Right now, the former CEO of Starbucks is facing questions from a Senate committee. Howard Schultz is defending the company's actions as some workers try to unionize. Do you understand that in America, workers have a fundamental right to join a union and collectively bargain to improve wages, benefits, and working conditions? Do you understand that? I understand and we respect the right of every partner who wears a green apron, whether they choose to join a union or not. Are you aware that NLRB judges have ruled that Starbucks violated federal labor law over 100 times during the past 18 months, far more than any other corporation in America? Sir, Starbucks Coffee Company unequivocally, and let me set the tone for this very early on, has not broken the law. I defer to Senator Tuberville. Nearly 300 of Starbucks' 9,000 company-owned stores have voted to unionize, including in Ann Arbor and Clinton Township, but the labor group has yet to reach a contract agreement with Starbucks at any of the stores. The grand jury weighing charges against former President Trump is not meeting today. The 23-member jury has been meeting on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, but the panel will not be talking about the Trump hush money case tomorrow either. That means that there will likely be no word on possible charges this week.